I've got some housekeeping to take care of. And I'm nursing a little bit of a hangover today. I can't imagine why. I, no, no, Who either can I. Who did that to you? Who did, that, who did do that to me? I, I, whoever it is should be... Uh, uh, had a, t- had a talk with. A Strong talk words. With serious, well, serious funny, talk funny you should say that, Canel, because I, <laughs> it's time. Uh, no, that was a lot of fun last night with the screening. It was the first time you'd watched it in a while, you said? Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah I haven't seen it in years. That's, the fir- that's only the second time I've ever sat there the entire only thing. Only the second time. Yeah. We've got a lot of Terrifier fans, right? I would love if we, af- afterwards if we can take a photo of yeah, this audience. Please. Yes. You guys, you guys are, are amazing. So incredible. Thank we you for being one. here. Thank yeah. you. Um, how does the crowd response to Terrifier take you guys? How do you, how do you feel like when you're at the table and people are coming up? And we talked about it last night, like not trauma dumping, but they'll, they'll talk to you about how they feel about it. Uh, it's kind of wild. I don't think I, we ever imagined. Thank you. I don't think we ever imagined it um, really resonating with you all the way that it has. We tr- like, it's, a, it's been a very different experience, I think, for Jenna and I than it has for everybody else because we never, it wasn't Terrifier yet. You guys made it Terrifier. Everybody else who's come in since has like known with the, what they were walking into. We never did. So yeah. this has just been like unbelievable and so humbling every yeah, single way. And I've had a couple of you have come up and said that it's your comfort movie, which first <laughs> of all, I, I, I hope you're okay. I, yeah. <laughs> But uh, it makes me happy that we can keep you company when you need it. That's yeah. what film is for. That's what art is for. Not I, art, art, you know, cinema. Yeah, I, I say this a lot. And, like, um, I think, uh, like, the, the purpose of storytelling is that it's the closest we can be to connect with other humans without actually suffering ourselves, you know? And so we love that we can connect with you all. Yeah, there's a catharsis. And, I mean, I think probably a lot of us feel this way, right? Like there's a catharsis in watching horror movies and there's a, a, a therapeutic something to watching horror movies. Yeah. And I think that's why a lot of us are here. Do you have a horror comfort movie? Ooh. I mean, we talked about this last night. My favorite horror movie is John Carpenter's The Thing. Favorite of all time. We got one John Carpenter The Thing fan in the house. <laughs> I think for me it's the craft. Like I will stop what I'm doing if the original craft is on, and also Lost Boys. Like those are Lost the two. Lost Boys, yeah. 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 Well, and yeah. this one is technically more sci-fi than horror, but it's kind of existential horror. In terms of my comfort movie that I watch all the time, there's an indie sci-fi called Coherence. No. Okay. Well, check it out. It's very, very good. I've, I've seen it so many times. I think Lord of the Rings, Fellowship of the Ring. <laughs> like, yeah. I will yeah, 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 yeah. For that. Very much. Hellraiser, the original uh, Hellraiser. Uh, yeah. I can't help. So I good. can't help. It's that music. It just, yeah. yeah, it suits it's, me. It's beautiful. It's really, like, trippy. I saw it at a queer horror night in L.A. recently. They were doing a screening. Um, and I was with Barbara Crampton, and she fell asleep. And I think it's because it was <laughs> soothing music. It is. It is. Um, yeah, and there's a lot, well, yeah, t- uh, Hellraiser does a lot for queer cinema with queer creatives yeah. and Clive Barker's from my hometown so I feel a little bit of affinity towards it. <laughs> Love that. Yeah, we've got a lot of creeps in Liverpool. Oh yeah. yeah, I mean a lot of, I mean horror, we've talked about this before, horror is, ha- has historically been one of the most inclusive genres. Yeah intersectionally across the board. I mean, the original Fright Night is the gayest movie I've ever seen. <laughs> yes it is. Yeah. Yeah. No notes. Yes, no, no. I've seen plenty of gay movies. Fright Night's up there. Um, where's David? Where have you gone? Oh, we've got questions. David's broke the microphone again. God damn it, David. No, I'm just kidding. You can't, you can't get the staff. We can't. David, you're a champion. No, testing. Te- hey, there we go. Um, hi, uh, absolutely adore Terrifier, but it's going to be quite philosophical for this first question. Knowing the success that the film has now, what would you, if you could go back in time, what would you tell yourselves while you were filming the film? Keep better records. <laughs> like, um, I think what's like weird now is like, uh, th- like it, this is a, such a stupid thing, but it's like more money, more problems. You know what I mean? Like the bigger it gets, the more we have to keep track of like things that you don't as an artist ever think about, like accounting and things like that and like paperwork. And uh, I, I wish I was like better about that from the jump. You know what I, I mean? mean? We, like like you, you're pointing out, we shot it nine years ago. Uh, we were babies. We, there's, there's a lot of experience that we've had. I mean, we had already been working for a while, but there's so much more that we know 
now in terms of in terms of contracts, in terms of safety, in yeah. terms of all sorts of things. But it certainly, if we had known, would have made the the intense conditions that we shot it in. I think it would have been easier to be patient if we had known what you guys were going to make it. Yeah, and I also think like what's been kind of nice is like. Um, since we've kind of been through the ringer with it from the beginning, um, every time new people come in, uh, we get to kind of like be the big sister figures in it, where we can kind of go, you know, uh, this is what you need to ask for, this is what's acceptable, this is what's safe, this is what's not safe, you know, um, it's okay to say that you need a minute, it's, you know, stuff like that. And it is, I mean, we were, everybody else who's come in has been in their 30s and stuff. We were 22. We had no idea <laughs> what was going to happen, you know? Little babies. And it's, it, it's a baptism of fire, really, I suppose. Yeah. It's a really difficult... Was it a learning experience for Damien when he was making it, do you think? Everyone I involved. I hope so. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Every single person involved, was. it was a learning experience for. I mean, I, I would argue that we were probably the most experienced people on that set oh, yeah. at the time. Like, it was very new to everyone. I think everyone learned a lot. I think that's always, like, the funniest thing for, like, for me to, that's, like, shocking is when people are like, oh, my God, I, like, really wanted to be in Terrifier 3, Terrifier 2, I auditioned, and we're like, we just got, because, like, they needed us at the time more than we needed them, which is so wild to think about, you know? Um, and I, I think Damien learned a lot working with us and our needs and, you know, um, and from our experience on other sets, and We've learned a lot working with him and working with new directors and have had opportunities to now, you know, work with first time directors and indie directors and like they look to us, which is such an honor, you know? I'm looking for David in the crowd for the next Hello. question. Hello. Oh, oh, he's the one in the black shirt. He's easy to spot. <laughs> <laughs> A sea of black shirts. Hi, um, Terrifier was a very introductory movie for like gore in horror for me. So what was the special effects like process like getting killed by Art the Clown? Uh, first of all, if that was an introductory experience, I hope that you are okay. I, I hope you've recovered. I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, we, we talked about this a little bit last night, but like my death scene, for example, was the most indie chaos. It, like I, I had all these um, prosthetics on my face for the bullet holes, and then there were tubes that were run underneath them, and Damien is like three feet away blowing into them, so blood spurts out of my face. It was very janky. But, you know, it was, it was scrappy, indie filmmaking, for yeah, sure. Yeah, I think also, like, the first time, the first time I met Damien, well, no, I had met him once before, but the first, like, day, that was, like, our effects, like, mold day, Damien glued me to a table. I'm not kidding, because we were doing it so indie, there were not enough hands at the time. Now what you can do, as is, like, real inside baseball, but now what you can do if you're, like, doing a full body is you can literally, like, the technology is there that they, they scan your entire body or your head or whatever they're doing, and they can make a computer model which then generates into the, um, the dummy. Uh, but uh, the old school way to do that, which a lot of indie filmmakers still do, is to cast your entire body with this stuff called alginate, but it dries very quick. So we couldn't get it on in time. So we had to skip that step. Shouldn't do that learning experience. And I got stuck to the table. Um, so like it was always kind of like the most indie type of stuff, but that's also kind of like the world I had come from before. So like, it's just, you know, you learn how to do it and you just keep moving forward. Because you came from trauma movies, you were saying? Yeah, my, well, I did Terrifier right after I had done this film, Return to Newcomb High, which was directed by Lloyd Kaufman and premiered at the 2013 Cannes Film Festival. It's a queer horror comedy that Trey Parker and Matt Stone did the treatment for. And that was, in t that's like, Lloyd is exclusively practical effects. I don't think he'd let you use, even though if, if you prove to him that the technology was better to do a body scan, I don't think he, I still don't think he would have let you. Uncle Lloyd? Uncle Lloyd would never. Uncle Lloyd would never. Although Uncle Lloyd's first rule of production is safety to humans, um, Damien had to learn that that was the first rule of production. We've got some questions from... We, ha we have a question here, but hold on. Look, look how yes, stunning how queen. is that. Gosh, wearing oh it better God. than I ever could. You look beautiful. Oh my God. <laughs> And you got the Spanx on, that's an important part. The dress is a lot shorter than I, than, every time I put it on, I don't, I never remember it being as short as it is, so you're prepared. Yeah. Our question is down here though. Huh. First of all, Jenna, do, do you recognize me from three or four years ago? 
Hi the, again. Art, Art the Clown Appreciation Society. We, yeah. We interviewed you. Remember little Dolly? Dolly the dog? Yes. Yes. It's been so long. Yeah, indeed. I said I'll meet you one day and, and um, <laughs> I'll come and see you later on. Thank but, you. Um, we all know obviously Terrify 3 is going mad at the moment, but I still prefer Terrify. Thank you. Listen. We're biased. Listen. But thank you so much. Things get bigger, but the crown remains heavy. That's all I have to say about that. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Oh, we've got a question in the front row from you, apparently. You also Hi. look amazing. <laughs> thank you. Um, this question is for you, Jenna. Um, Based on the formula of the final girl, there is a very specific formula. And um, I've read that you need to be um, feminine and kind and soft, but not too feminine. Um, but you need to be masculine, but not too masculine. And that's how you survive a horror film. So I would say that you were the perfect formula. What would you say about that? And were you disappointed that you weren't the final girl? Uh, that's a great question. Uh, I, I think there are, there are two parts to it. What, to the second part, um, I'm obviously, uh, it means a lot that I've gotten a lot of condolences on my death today. Thank you so much. Uh, and I'm sorry, or you're welcome, I don't know. But I, I, think, I think two of the major reasons that the film is so memorable is her iconic death and the fact that I don't live. And I feel like the fact that there is that twist to this classic trope is a big part of what makes it so, you know, puts you in a chokehold. So I, I don't think that's a bad thing at all. I think it's uh, super memorable and unique. Uh, and then your question about gender is really interesting and gender performance because it's something that I have a, an ongoing sort of relationship with in, in, in my real life um, where, you know, it's all made up, gender's not real. Uh, and you're right, there is kind of this expectation of you have to be in a perfect place and I think that's a ridiculous expectation to place on people in movies or people in real life. Uh, and uh, I'd like to think I have a balance of both in real life, I think a lot of people do. And I think that's a, a beautiful thing and we should expand our ideas of what gender and gender performance even are. I, I think also if I may add on, yes, please, applause. <laughs> um. I think also if I want to add to that, I think we as the horror community um, should be aware of the terms that we're using. Um, these terms like Scream Queen and Final Girl, while we've been able to kind of reclaim them, are historically um, used in um, the entertainment industry to pay women, people of color, um, non-binary binary individuals less and to uh, build them less and, not, and make sure they can't have the careers that they're supposed to have. So I'd love to see us like, evolve past the idea that like we are limited to like being a final girl we don't say lasting boy we say actor in a film do you see what i'm saying like we right we are better than that like let's let's do better let's keep moving forward my favorite final girl uh in cinema is bruce willis and die hard <laughs> And to be fair, based on your description of a final girl, I'd probably be tremendous at it. So I think you, you were the be. final girl you after are last the final night. Girl. <laughs> you were last night's final girl. You made it. I I definitely sleepwalked out of my hotel room at some point <laughs> as well because Neil was snoring. I was. These guys got me in a bad way. It was it was the it was the tequila. It was the I, tequila. We do what we can. You know what I mean. You're and welcome then when you for went the to service. Bed, I carried on going. So <laughs> maybe it was my fault. Um, David's got a question from the Blob. Hello. I yeah, hi, thanks. Um, it's it's, it's his right. T-shirt, I wasn't insulting him, like he's legit. It's, it's a fair comment either way, honestly. I've been, been all right. Anyway, sorry, I just wanted to say, um, love the opening night last night, it was tremendous. Uh, Jenna, I just want to say, you have the best drag name ever. Doesn't that, she? Oh, Thank you. Is, I passed just, out, I still haven't thought I, of mine. Just iconic. Um, for, uh, before you complete your question, sorry to interrupt you, just to explain for anyone who wasn't, first of all, thank you everyone who did come last night. If you weren't able to make it, what they're referencing is that uh, I said if I ever did drag, my drag name would be Cunt Eastwood. <laughs> just iconic. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to ask, um, as a, I, like, I'm a bit of an independent filmmaker myself and I, I dabble in acting here and there, but uh, I'm just wondering, do you have any advice for either, be it an aspiring filmmaker or aspiring actors? Like, yeah. What would, like, uh, this goes for Catherine as well, I'm just wondering, do you guys have any advice in that regard, like, for, like, independent yeah. artists, actors, filmmakers as such? Yeah, I, my, my advice to anyone who's interested in working in film in any way is just to get on set in every way possible. 
I think every actor should have to do extra work and everyone in production should have to work as a production assistant because it's a great way to work in a way where you can watch and study and absorb without having a ton of uh, responsibility and, and get a sense of, you know, and do a lot of different positions on set because then you have a better sense of how the big picture works. Like, you know, Catherine has also done a lot of producing. I write and direct as well, but I also a first assistant directed for years and have produced as well. And it just gives you a sense of how the whole train moves. So yeah. just get experience, get on set. Agreed. I mean, we're, we're both writer actors, Jenna's a director. And I think like uh, one of the things someone told me very early in my career was that um, I didn't know what I was talking about because I was just an actor. And he was totally wrong. He was an asshole. I didn't know what I was talking about. But I never wanted anybody to ever be able to say that to me again. So I've worked like above and below the line in so many different departments. I've assisted in effects. I've PA'd. I've AD'd. Just like Jenna, like we just kind of, and I think that's the best way to do it because it's, Jenna likes to say, and I, I love this, it's a team sport. So you have to understand, you know, everybody together. And then the other advice that I've gotten just like, ex, like I don't know, more ambiguously is um, all you have to do to be successful in this business is keep telling stories and don't die. Just keep telling your stories because there's always going to be um, someone who relates to it. Doesn't matter, relates to it. Doesn't matter what you look like, what you sound like, you know, where your background is. It, somebody will register with what your story is. So all you have to do is keep telling those stories. And don't die because then you can't tell them. <laughs> Before we move on to the next, okay, you can carry on applauding if you want. Like, sorry, I just, this, oh, I stole your applause. I'm so sorry. Um, can we talk about Faceless After Dark? We can talk about Faceless After Dark. <laughs> the first time I met you was Fright Fest when you were there. Was it? A, were you prim premiere in it? Yeah, that's right. So can yeah. you tell us a little bit about it? I know you're in it as well. Little baby, I call myself the emotional support actor in that <laughs> film. <laughs> So Faceless After Dark is a psychological horror, or psychological thriller, really, that uh, I'm the lead in and that I co-wrote, and Catherine has a role in it as well. And it premiered last year in London at Fright Fest on that insane IMAX screen to a theater of over 700 people, which was wild. And uh, I recommend checking it out if you're able to find it. I've heard it's harder to find here in the UK, but if you're able to, uh, there are definitely nods in it to Terrifier. There are kind of meta references in it. But the whole thing is meant to be, the pitch is essentially if you took Travis Bickle from Taxi Driver and made him the protagonist of Promising Young Woman. So it's supposed to be a descent into madness story. It's, uh, it's, it's a hero to villain story and uh, it's a lot of fun. I think, but I'm biased. I think it's incredible, personally. I think it's one of the best indie horror films I've seen in the last five years. Thank you. And I'm biased because I'm in it, but also because Jenna but is... Some of you have come up to me today and have already seen it and are, yeah. are fans of it, and it means a lot. And you're all going to go and check it out after today, aren't you, yeah? Faceless After Dark. Yes. Absolutely. Um, I'm going to be greedy, David. I've got one more. You were in Renfield with Nicolas Cage. Yes, she was. <laughs> like, Correct. I had no, I, you know, when, I don't want to, when horror actors or people you like pop up in other films and you don't know they're in the movie, I had that moment with you in Renfield. When, uh. And it's like, no way. And then obviously you were in the scenes with Nicholas Holt and the support group. Mm -hmm. Was that a long shoot? How long were you on Renfield for? Yeah, I worked at, so yeah, Renfield, uh, I, I worked on it on and off for three months uh, in New Orleans. And it was a ton of fun. I mean, you guys, Nicolas Cage is a fucking icon. He's amazing. He's, and I remember, like, I sat down at the table read, and they put me next to him, and we talked about our cats. And uh, I could have died in that moment. Um, and then I ended up dying anyway. Spoiler alert. But, uh, but yeah, he's an amazing actor. He and Nicholas Holt, they're both really kind. They're both really passionate. They both care a lot about what they do. And they're both very generous performers to work with. It was one of my favorite sets I've ever been on. And... Uh, if, if you watch it and you don't see my death, it's because it's in the deleted scenes. I did a crazy stunt. Definitely recommend checking it out. Has everyone seen Renfield? Yeah. It absolutely crushed me that it didn't do as well as it should have because it's a horror comedy with it's Nicolas so Cage good. as Dracula. And it moves. The action and it moves. It's so good. Yeah. I, think, I mean, you know, there's so many weird factors to why things don't necessarily do well at the box office. It's, it's, sometimes it's timing. Sometimes it's just whatever. Yeah. But... I think it's a great film. I'm very proud of it. Highly recommend checking it out. Hello. 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 
So when I came to the live commentary last night, uh, Catherine, your story about how you almost died, um, well, I, I didn't know about that, I thought it was um, interesting, it was wrong, quite moving actually. Um, and I think it's quite hard, especially for young women, to kind of advocate for themselves and their safety. And obviously you've touched on a little bit today that you're better at it, but if you had like any, there's a lot of, a lot of like quite young women, like uh, promising like film stars here, if you could give any advice, it'd be great. Um, yeah, I mean, in, in that situation, uh, for those who weren't there, what she's, what she's talking about is um, the death scene that I do um, in uh, t Terrifier is uh, hung upside down, sawed in half by hacksaw, and um, we did not do that safely. That's, um, you know, Damien has said that. It, we didn't do it safely, um, and um, I was hung upside down for too long with not the proper equipment to do so, and I had uh, cranial swelling and almost had a seizure and then had to have a minor medical procedure where they went into the back of my ear to move my eardrums, and I do still have health issues um, as a result. And um, while, you know, it went okay, I didn't die in real life, and, um, you know, I I've recovered, um, that's just a situation that nobody should ever be in, ever. Um, and, um, you know, I think the thing as young women when, when we're working, and anyone really, um, uh, any sort of marginalized group, but just humans in general, it's so hard to advocate for ourselves um, because we're always told, you know, that you have to, like, you know, sit down and be grateful and don't be difficult. Um, but, you know, safety in your life is so much more important and your comfortability of things and there's there's you don't have to explain yourself to anybody you know you can you can very honestly just say no i'm not comfortable with that and that's fine always a hundred and, and 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 you can change your mind at any given time too like one thing um i advocate for a lot as well is like i did nudity very early in my career not just in in terrifier um and one thing that a lot of young actresses don't know um, is that when you consent to doing nude work on film, that does not mean, unless you explicitly authorize it, that the, that the production has the right to your nude image to the end of time. Everything is within context. So they have the rights to show it within the film, within the screenings, but that's all. Um, and um, any, anything else is at your consent and at your comfortability level. So just know that you and your voice is, is valuable and take up as much fucking space as you want. Take up the entire fucking room. Let them work to fit you because you deserve it. <laughs> Hello, Pat. Oh. Hello. Um, just, just wanted to... Um, no, um, was there any point um, in the um, filming of Terrified that you was at any point ever nervous on any of this um, scenes? Yeah, I mean, I, when I almost died, I was very nervous <laughs> that that was going to happen. I actually, I don't think I knew that that's what was happening. The adrenaline was like going so high, I just felt like the symptoms. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think we were nervous on a lot of it. It was dangerous. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I don't remember being most of the time I wasn't nervous necessarily other than like the the night before we started just because I always oh, get anxiety before a shoot uh, and and can't sleep the night before you know the night before I get school anxieties starts. before this yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, like... we both have social anxiety so there's definitely that going on um, I, I will say like I, I think the only like scene that I was necessarily were nervous for was the one where I'm watching her die because and we mentioned this last night we were both on studio films at the time, and so they were shooting around us, and so we were actually not in the same room at all for that scene. So she's dying, and I'm reacting to nothing, and those were happening completely differently, and it's already uh, difficult for me to be emotional on camera, even though I have to do it all the time. And so I always get nervous when I have to do that sort of thing, but especially when I'm you know, reacting to just Damien describing what's happening, rather than actually seeing someone I love very much be, be hurt. And that is all we've got time for for today. I could do this all day, but we. Oh my God! I would love Let's to take a picture before we get off stage. Please, everybody.